and welcome to New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. This is Ian Stark for New Blue. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a really cool way to use one of the great plugins from the New Blue Video Essentials 2 collection. Video Essentials 2 includes a wide selection of tools that includes a noise reducer, a vignette generator, a rack focus simulator, color and tone manipulation tools, and even a lens distortion corrector, or a lens distortion creator for the keen skateboarders out there. The plugin we'll be working with today is the Picture in Picture Generator, a very flexible tool that allows you to create simple, practical PNP effects as well as some very cool creative effects. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this effect using just a couple of keyframes. It reminds me a little bit of a simple version of iTunes cover flow, and it's so easy to create that I can see myself using this in some of the training or case study videos that I make for my clients. To keep things simple, I'm just using two video clips for this example. Let's step through the project slowly so you can see what's going on. We start with step one being the focus of attention, while step two is out of focus and off to the right. The out of focus effect is achieved using another new blue plugin, Soft Focus, from the first Video Essentials collection, and I'll talk about that later. Notice that step one has a yellow border, whereas step two is red. As we move through the project, step 1 slides to the left and out of focus, while step 2 slides in to take the main focus of attention. At the same time, step 1's border turns red and step 2's turns yellow. And that's it. It looks very effective and it's extremely easy to achieve using New Blue's Picture in Picture plugin. So now, let's take a step-by-step -step look at how to create this using just a few keyframes. Obviously, for a PNP effect, you need two P's. I've already brought these into my editor, one stacked above the other, and applied the PNP effect to both clips. Doesn't look very exciting just yet, so let's play around with some of the controls and knock it into shape. We'll start by positioning the two clips roughly where we want them in the frame, using the controls in the picture section. I want step one to be in the front, slightly to the left, so I'll roughly position that. We can be more precise later. Let's set a size of 70. For the moment we'll leave the crop and opacity settings, but briefly, crop will allow you to scale up the clip and opacity allows you to set a level of transparency. We don't want to rotate this clip in any way, so we won't touch those controls. Remember that not only can you adjust your settings by literally dragging the controls, but you can also type in precise values. OK, let's move on to the Step 2 clip, which we want to place to the right of the frame, in the background, angled off center. Remember to select the instance of the effect you're using on the second clip before you start making any adjustments. To make this look like it's behind the first clip, we need first to change its size. I'm going to start with a setting of 35. We can angle the clip in either the X, Y or Z planes, but for this example we want to just affect the Y plane. I need to adjust the position to get this looking right. Now we need to add the reflections. To make this easy for you, you'll be pleased to hear that there's a preset, Gentle Reflection, that will do all this for you. So you just have to keyframe the position and movement, but for this tutorial I want you to get to know the different controls you have access to and how they'll affect the image so you can mix it up and add your own touches. If you do decide to use the preset, make sure you apply it first before you make changes to position, size and rotation, otherwise those changes will be overwritten by the settings contained in the preset. Going back to the first clip, you can see as I raise the opacity value so the reflection appears below the clip. Let's take this up to a setting of 80. The offset control lets you set the reflection to occur at a distance from the original image, which we don't want to do here, so we'll leave that at zero. Finally, Fade lets you control the falloff of the reflection to simulate the effect on varying reflective surfaces. Dial this into Taste, I'm going to set this at 40. I'll just quickly set the reflection on the Step 2 clip, and this is really beginning to shape up now. The final thing I want to do is to change the border for both clips. Remember I want the clip that has the viewer's attention to have a yellow border, while the out of focus clip should be red. So let's go back to the settings for Step 1. I want a thin border, so let's try a setting of 20. Hold on, nothing happened. OK. We need to increase the border's opacity value to 100%. Nope, nothing yet. 
Okay, then, well, let's look at the colour. There you go. A black border on a black background just isn't going to work. Let's change it to the yellow we were looking for. I can do that either by using the eyedropper tool and clicking anywhere on the screen to select a colour I like, or I can choose from the colour palette. I'm going to take this nice yellow here. Let's do the same for the Step 2 clip, but this time I'll choose a deep red. I don't want to blur the border, but if I did, I could blur it into the image or outside it, which can give some nice glow effects. The other area we could change would be if we wanted to set up a drop shadow effect. We don't want to do that for this effect, but I'll quickly go through the controls for you. Blur sets the amount of blurring in the shadow. Opacity sets how visible it is. Colour is pretty obvious. And Angle sets the shadow's direction. Finally, Offset sets the distance of the shadow from the object. Right, now let's take a look at the movement of the clips. Remember, this is what we're trying to achieve. OK, let's set a keyframe on the Step 1 clip at 0 seconds. We want the effect to hold its values for 5 seconds before moving, so let's put another keyframe in at 5 seconds without changing the values. I want the transition to take place over 2 seconds, so let's put another keyframe in at 7 seconds. Now this is the one that we want to change the values for using the final resting position of the clip. So let's select the 7 second keyframe and reposition the clip. We want the clip to end up in the left side of the frame, directly opposite where the other clip currently is, and we want it slightly angled towards the middle of the frame. We also need to shrink it to match the size of the other clip. There. Let's turn to the Step 2 clip now. We'll add keyframes at 0, 5 and 7 seconds, remembering that the 0 second and 5 second keyframes are the same. We want the 7 second keyframe to adopt the same values as the Step 1 clip, with the exception of its X position. Let's reset all rotation values to zero so it's square on. And finally, let's position it where we want it at the front and to the right of the frame. All we need now to do is to swap the colour of the borders in the seven second keyframes on both clips. To finish off the effect and to simulate depth of field, I've also used a soft focus effect from Video Essentials 1. I've keyframed this at five and seven seconds to go from no blur to a light blur, or vice versa, depending on whether the clip is coming to the front of the frame or going to the back. And that really does finish off the effect nicely. And there you have it. Simple, but really effective. For more information on Picture in Picture or any of the Video Essentials plugins, visit www.newbluefx.com, where you'll also find lots more tutorials in the Tips and Techniques library. This is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching and learning a little bit about New Blue FX.